As Steve said, I'd been a bit going a while. I started 2012. Uh, it wasn't about till 2013 where I really dove in deep. Uh, got into mining. It was all GPUs still back then, so every uh, GPU I could find, whether it was friends or family, I scrapped it all together, put it into computers, started mining, regardless of profitability. Um, so then the ASICs came along, and uh, with a small loan from my father, this was my first ASIC rig, uh, a complete and utter fire hazard. <laughs> Especially in 40 degree summer days in Australia, hence the two pedestal fans leaning against it. Uh, but yeah, that, that mined a uh, good three or four Bitcoin from memory. Uh, so anyway, let's fast forward six years to where we are now. I'm going to talk about five areas of uh, the STN, which led to our recent uh, gigabyte, gigabyte size blocks, and then uh, a little bit more on what we plan to do in the future. Uh, so yeah, the five areas I'm going to talk about, uh, what's the STN and why do we even have an STN, the new mining API, the scaling progress we've made so far, and the uh, Satoshi Shotgun's role in that, some uh, discoveries and roadblocks that we've had, and then what's next and how do you people get involved. So what is the scaling network? Um, so it's the fourth compatible network for the Bitcoin SV node. Uh, it was born out of a necessity to prepare both the SV node software and uh, the mainnet for ever-increasing ever transaction volume. Uh, we realized pretty much straight away that uh, this network would actually benefit the whole ecosystem if it was public, so that's what we did, we made it public. Uh, so why do we have an SDN? Uh, as developers, you're uh, constantly testing your applications. Uh, if you're anything like me, you're always writing test cases or debugging something. Uh, but one thing that's a little bit harder to test is scale. Um, so say your application talks directly on the peer-to-peer -peer network. This is something we think that more and more Bitcoin applications are gonna start to do. Um, how, you, how fast are you able to effectively filter out and capture only the transactions your application is interested in? Uh, sure, you can test this on reg test. Uh, but you miss out on all the peer-to-peer -peer networking joys, uh, you know, like propagation, duplicate messages, malicious messages, uh, packet loss, and so on. Uh, so you'd use the testnet, the standard testnet, and everything looks good, but uh, you're probably the only one on the testnet, so everything looks good because the, the only people there are yourself. Um, so that's where the SDN comes in. Uh, we can have you, you can test your application on a network that's heavily utilized 24-7. Uh, so as we've shown in the last few weeks, it's also several steps ahead of the main net in both capacity and volume. Uh, so if you're developing your application against the test net, the scaling test net, uh, you're going to be constantly seeing regular periods of 300 plus transactions a second, and that's only going to increase. Uh, so by the time your application makes it to production uh, on main net, you should have no, pro no trouble at all. Because when you're developing with Bitcoin, uh, you're joining a network that one day is going to handle many orders of magnitude more transaction volume than we see today. Uh, and we need to be ready for this. Uh, just lost my place, sorry. Uh, especially the node team. The STN, while it should be considered a very valuable asset for you as developers, uh, it's absolutely essential for the node team to ensure they're on the right path to scaling. Uh, We've already used the scaling test network uh, with the test, the SV node team, since its inception. And it always has been used to trial and run uh, the newest builds of Bitcoin SV, including pre-QA builds. Uh, and especially we use this a lot in the lead up to the 0.20 release with the new mining API. Uh, the feedback that the scaling test network can give the node developers is as close as we can get to real world. Uh, they can see pretty much right away if any change they make, either big or small, has any sort of performance improvement or helps highlight a uh, previously unknown bottleneck. Uh, which brings me to the mining API. So the new mining API, Get Mining Candidate, uh, was publicly released in uh, 0.20. We had been using it in-house before and done a lot of testing on it. Uh, as I think Daniel was talking about earlier, it's because the uh, old method of get block template, it doesn't scale very well at all. Uh, it very quickly leads to either the node timing out, the pool timing out, something crashing. Uh, essentially, it's just trying to send huge, huge JSON strings over your RPC connection and you know something, something gives up. 
So the new mining API, it was one of the first integrations we planned for Bitcoin SV. Uh, it was originally designed by Andrew Stone and um, forgive, you, forgive me if I get the pronunciation wrong, Johan Verdan Hoven. Uh, initially we tested it as a direct port over from Bitcoin Unlimited. Uh, but then we thought that we could improve or expand upon it and we also reached out to miners and asked them for any feedback on what they would like to see in a mining API. And uh, thanks to this, we've now completely decoupled pretty much block size uh, from mining. And uh, yeah, it really removed this bottleneck. So now we're ready to start scaling. And uh, some wise fellow said that up top. When we first started the STN, which we originally was called, we were originally calling it the, uh, the Gigablock test network, but then we decided that gigabytes were too small of a target. Uh, the goal was to see what happens with a continuous 128 megabyte blocks. Uh, we already had a fair idea on some of the limitations that we were going to run into. Uh, also running um, BitPay's Insight Block Explorer with large blocks is a pain. Uh, so we didn't, we didn't really have a good way to see what we were doing. Uh, however, thanks to the shotgun team in November uh, during the rebirth of Bitcoin and uh, the data we gathered through that. We uh, used the time between then and now wisely and we went in prepared. So uh, since November, the uh, SV node team had been hard at work. They were planning the immediate and near term improvements to scaling, in particular block propagation. Uh, we started to see the first of those improvements in uh, SV uh, 0 0.1.1, which I think uh, Daniel or Steve mentioned earlier, with uh, increases to the peer-to-peer -peer protocol message length, moving in inventory messages to their own threads, and a few other things like that. The uh, 0.1.1 release was also the first public release of the SDN. It was uh, when, we, when the SDN first started being noticed because it produced the first 128 megabyte blocks on our blockchain, public blockchain. And after the first 128 meg blocks were mined and a few tweaks were made to the shotgun, uh, we set out to make a day of it, literally a day of 128 megabyte blocks, uh, which we did. So we kept going and uh, we got bored after a week. So uh, we took the knowledge we gained from that, and uh, all the data, and we buckled down for a few months of rigorous work to prepare for 0.2.0, uh, which included a lot of work by Eston, who's in the crowd over there, I uh, did a lot of work on the Satoshi shotgun uh, as it was needing to be upgraded as well, not only to handle the sheer volume, but we also wanted to include other transaction types like op returns. Uh, since they were becoming very popular on mainnet since uh, the miners lifted the limit on how big they could be. So the shotgun saw improvements and I've got a, it's a brief overview, courtesy of Eston here, on uh, how the shotgun operates. I won't go too much into detail there, but. Quite a lot of thought has gone into it, and it's a really well-developed system. So we saw improvements there, allowing us to sc schedule transaction loads, uh, create transaction profiles, uh, pretty much specify any sorts of variables with sizes or you know, uh, any sort of transfer data rates, things like that. Uh, there's still more to come with the shotgun. So a few uh, discoveries and roadblocks that we have. Uh, we hadn't quite worked out all the kinks with mining, uh, particularly the block propagation and the transaction acceptance. Uh, they were still pretty much single-threaded. Um, if you go digging through the Bitcoin code, everything's single-threaded. <laughs> um, and this caused most of the issues that we encountered in the lead up to the first 128 meg blocks. Uh, anyway, Despite this, we found a solution and uh, the first lot of 128 meg blocks we found, we actually did a bit of trick, trickery with the mining as we mined in series. So each node took on a block and then the next node did the next block and so on. But uh, it's thanks to these discoveries, or rather this was a confirmation of a theory, uh, that led us to the choices that we made on the way to 0.2.0. Uh, and all of that progress got us to the point where for the recent uh, gigabyte blocks, including the 1.4 gigabyte block, we didn't have to do any hand-holding of the, uh, the mining nodes at all. They just took, took care of it. And uh, as Steve mentioned earlier, the 1.4 gigabyte block propagated in 27 seconds, so it wasn't really an issue at all. Uh, 
Uh, so what's next? So we're going to expand on the website. Uh, at the moment, it's pretty much a one-page site with a, a blurb and uh, some stats. I want to put a lot more information on there. Uh, the next phase of work, we're also going to start up with the uh, Satoshi shotgun, so we can get to terabyte levels of transaction volume being set over the P2P network. The initial increase in this performance uh, we plan to have from two of our tools that we have being merged together. Uh, and what, in particular, we are planning to get all, a lot of that performance on the cryptographic side of the shotgun. So uh, the generating of addresses and the signing of transactions, because that's currently the bottleneck there. Uh, we're going to continue to run various test scenarios on the scaling test network for the SV node team uh, as they work towards the Genesis upgrade. We're also working on an improved simulation of traffic for the scaling test network. This is to make the traffic appear more real world and less like a stress test. Uh, we've also started building out a support department for the scaling network. So we're hiring uh, some staff and we're developing tools in-house that we can use. And basically we want to create an easy on-ramp for developers and businesses looking at Bitcoin SV as a possible solution to their needs. Uh, we plan to do this by providing the STN as that on-ramp uh, with a dedicated support staff along with future plans to offer a certification program for businesses. So say your business wants to have an independent uh, certification that you can handle the transaction loads that we're expecting to see. Uh, so you can see that we've got many things planned. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're already the largest test net, and if I'm wrong, someone on the internet will correct me. <laughs> Um, but we're planning to get bigger still. So, how can you get involved? Uh, joining the STN with a Bitcoin node is easy. Uh, it's just add a parameter to your, parameter to your Bitcoin comp file, uh, which is STN equals one. Uh, you can also use that as a command line argument. Uh, if you're running your own software and uh, you're looking to use the STN via P2P, uh, you'll need to use the STN's network magic, which is yeah, up on the screen there. Um, other than the port numbers and uh, obviously the increased limits to scaling, everything else is the same as a standard test net, which means you can run uh, non-standard transactions or non-standard scripts rather. Uh, so as for the system specs for the STN, because obviously we're talking about uh, quite a quite an investment if you want to run some full nodes on an STN. Uh, for now, this is sort of what we're recommending. Uh, I don't know how current this will be, but uh, this, is, uh, this is what all of our machines that are running on the STN currently run. Uh, our smallest machine is actually a 16 gig RAM. And uh, I suggest, unless you have a need to keep the whole chain run in prune mode, because uh, yeah, the, the full one is uh, getting big quick. <laughs> 